Hey guys, welcome to the bench. Um, we're starting this episode off showing you this guitar. It's the Moxie guitar. This episode is called Moxie Makeover. I got this back to do a little adjustment on this bridge right here. Um, and I hope I've got the, the GoPro set up where you can see the whole thing here. I'm going to be using another camera to do close-ups and stuff. Anyway, it came back to me because... This guitar is hand, uh, manhandled by a little kid, and this bolt was moving around. And, and once I saw it, this guitar is about three years old, three and a half or so. And um, there's some things I would definitely do different if I built it now. So um, I decided that that's exactly what I'm going to do, is rebuild some things I wouldn't do the same way now. Okay, a couple housekeeping things to take care of at the beginning here. Don't forget, uh, give me a subscribe if you haven't, uh, and click the notify button. That way you'll get my videos. Give me a like if you like it. I appreciate your support of my channel. Next, the background music for today is no stranger to us. It's Scott H. Byram out of Austin, Texas, one-man band. Incredible. Um, you uh, can't go wrong listening to his music. Or wearing a hat. Who do you know wears a hat with a Thanksgiving turkey on it? Hello. A couple things for you to look at. Give you a preview of the future. Look at this. Wow, is that awesome? Look, it's nice and flat. Um, this is almost ready to just have a guitar neck bolted straight to it. A bridge right here. Pick up either here or up on the neck. This is um, a hubcap off of, I believe it's a, between a 1961 and 64 F100 Ford pickup truck. You're going to see this one show up. want to give a shout out to my friend R.T. Valine who gave us a little uh, Facebook episode, Instagram episode of him playing a, 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 a cough, blah, blah, blah. Totally losing it. License plate guitar in Oklahoma getting ready for the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival in Okima um, between July 10th and the 14th, 2019. But look at this. Something else we're going to be looking at in the future is I got a kit in. Um, we did a, a kit before. Um, I'm going to take a look at this kit in a build. It's a smaller. It doesn't have the edges that the other one does. The good news about that is the scale of it might match the neck better, as you can see here, wouldn't be so wide, uh, but there's some trade-offs, and we'll talk about when we do that again one more time. Oklahoma, RT, I hope you're doing well in those floods out there. Now, let's finally get down to the business here. This guitar is pretty simple, got a nice headstock. Moxie is a soda pop that they drink, I guess, somewhere in the southeast United States. I don't know what it is, but the idea here is this was built for the birth of a kid. And I guess the nickname for this kid is going to be Moxie. I, I would imagine that means that you're pretty tough or you got the grit it takes to get through life. So when I put this stuff together, I found an old Moxie label. I tried to match the color here. Uh, with the color of the label, I got a couple of Moxie bottle caps. We'll get close-ups of this stuff later. But this all started, this guitar started life as one of these Camacho 60x6 triple Maduro boxes. Nice and thick, kid-proof, uh, my typical build. That's how it started. Um, the guitar itself, that box is jumping out at life over here. The box itself... Uh, has a, a uh, coil pickup on it, volume control, jacks back here. You can tell this is one of my earlier guitars because I put the two strap pins here. This is the most uncomfortable thing. Since then, you know, I've put something up here and back here. And, oh my, there's no grease or right here. Um, that's just not acceptable. But what we're doing with this is these tuners here, I've gotten away from these tuners. I got an episode called Tuners. Um, we're going to change the tuners out on this with a closed gear configuration of tuner. Um, and um, I think that's going to work out better for us. Um, this bolt, 
a bridge. I talked to you about in the, in the last episode I did about bridge to nowhere was a problem with these flattening these out and this is a classic example of that. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to go with the adjustable uh, floating bridge uh, which is going to require us to put some holes in here and stuff. And then um, this guitar has um, it's grounded using a canning lid and that kind of stuff, the typical configuration. But the neck on this thing was a mess. Um, and we are going to, I've tore it apart. Um, I'm going to give you some details about that when we get into it. But let's start off working on the headstock. Okay, we're up here on the headstock, pointing out here. I, I got a couple of old Moxie bottle caps and uh, took a Forstner bit. Um, and sunk a, a, a hole into here and then put that moxie cap on here but um we've we've got this uh not made out of the lamp hardware and the bolt we're going to go ahead and retain that um i'm going to put grooves in here because i'm going to change the strings on it we'll do that a little bit later but the main thing that i'm going to do here up on this headstock is without trying to mar this up i am going to change these out and replace them with these and so this is a pretty easy job I flipped this over pull the screws out make sure I got some holes to fill up or redrill or something like that but this is a pretty easy job and I'll show you what it looks like as we go okay I got those out and uh, it's time to put the new ones on um, there's going to be a hole to cover right there if you can see it. Where's my pointer? Right there, so I'm going to fill that in, but I've got to put um, drill some starter holes in here for these new type of uh, Tuners, so I'll get that out of the way. I want to show you something here before I get going. I've got a small bit here it's for these very small screws here. You can see that. Um, you see about how long they are. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to drill all the way through, especially if you've got nothing to cover your your uh, headstock with, see. So I don't want a hole coming through there somewhere. So let me make sure I don't bump the camera here. But so what I've done is I've measured the side of the headstock here. And made sure that this flapper tape is at a spot where it won't go all the way through the neck kind of acts as a depth gauge and then you want to remember that we also have this amount of metal right here to help us out so I'm gonna get on drilling these now and quit talking finally but that's a lesson you don't want to learn the hard way a little piece of tape will fix you right up All right, there we go. Last hole is done. Like I said, once I get these in, I'm going to have a couple of holes sticking out from the last tuners, the old ones, and I'll just take a piece of toothpick and snap it off, glue it in there, and do a light sand and put a tad drop of uh, this pumpkin orange paint on it. Before I forget, of course, I use Duco cement, and I'll put a tad bit of that on the keeper there. I don't want these popping out every time I... I do my string so I just put a little bit on there like so and then um, I'll put them right in there and these fit a little bit tight and so once it's on there like that I just take my trusty rubber mallet and just tap it a little bit All right, there's some Scott H. Byron Church Point girls going on in the background. My graphics episode was made about this song. I'll give you a, a link to that. So I'll talk right now and drown out that vulgarity of Scott H. is using right now. But that's how you do it. Make sure there's no um, glue to dry there. All right, you want to do this real slow here. You don't strip these out. And then, uh, yeah, it helps to have some 
Scott H. buy them around the bend going on in the background and then you just go and tighten these up a little bit and make sure you do your final by hand and then see those couple little holes that are left over from the old tuners remember the bacon flavored toothpicks that aren't really bacon flavored Ooh, last one you know what it is bacon flavor yeah it sure is you know what I'm gonna save this for you at least one end so you can figure that out for yourself but anyway you take that tip you put it down in there like so and then you just snap it off you can file a little bit and then take a little tab of orange paint just spray it on the, the paper and take a q-tip or something and touch that up but um, let me flip this over oh yeah that's a lot better we come to party that's right scott we are the party brother okay now moving on to this this bridge we're going to get rid of this and um I just had it sitting on here. A couple of things I want you to notice is there are a couple of marks right here. There's the center point of the guitar. Um, everything lines up with that center of the neck, center of the pickup, center of the um, um, tail piece and where the strings are going to go. So those are those marks right there. And then we've got a mark there and a mark there. And that is the 25 and a half scale mark how do we know well i took my remember my ruler that or yardstick that i cut down to be 25 and a half inches if i lay that where the nut touches the end of the ruler i'm going to be right there and that's where those marks are if you can see that so the bridge that i'm going to put on needs to line up straight there and the center of the bridge needs to be where those marks are. So what I've done is I've taken a floating bridge, found the center point, and I'm going to lay that center point right there. And I'm going to make sure that it's lined up with where my mark is, my 25 and a half scale mark, going this way. Now I'm going to take a small bit and I'm going to run down and make a mark on the top of the box there and one there and then when I pop these off I will run that all the way through the top of the box there and I'm getting old I can't see right there now I'm going to take this Allen wrench or key and you see that right there that fits right in there so I'm just going to wind this out of here like so and separate that stud with the thumb screw on it and do both of them that way and then once that's done I'm going to get a hold of my drill bit that matches that size right there. Okay, so you can see that I have a drill bit that's just the perfect size and it matches that. I'm going to put this in a drill and then drill down through the box there and there and then mount a stud on each side. All right, there's one there. And there's one there now I am going to put a tad bit of duco cement I want to make sure that the Allen key side is up because both sides don't have them but I'm going to put a little duco cement in there and notice I didn't mar up the box doing this but I'm going to glue these in and then that bridge will sit right down in there once I get these started they're going to want to you know want them to go in kind of tight and they'll squeak I can I can help get the hole started here by putting a flare on it with this all like this where this just sits down in there and then I just get it started okay you can hear that they're tight 
as they go in. That's what you want. want to remember that I put a tad bit of Duco cement on the threads before I ran them down in there. And now I can take my floating bridge and just drop it on. There we go. And it's nice because if I want to move that up, I can just do that. Loosen up the strings a little bit and lift that up or let it down and adjust it. Of course, I've got some filing to do once I get the next set and everything uh, and know where the strings are. But that was a really simple fix. Okay, let's talk about the neck. Um, first off, I've already taken the uh, screws out of the hinges, so this picks right up. And um, it has my typical two RV sink drains. And what was going on here is I used to grind a skunk stripe here and get this lacquer off and then glue the neck right to the bottom of the box top. And um, you can see there, that's by the way where the studs came through for the floating bridge. But anyway, I would glue this on here. But then all of a sudden it dawned on me, if something happened where the glue broke loose, it would pull all of the lacquer that's on the lacquer layer that's over the chipboard, and I didn't want that. And that's where I started drilling holes through and attaching the neck with bolts. You can see that this coil sticks out just a tad. I hope you can see that. So I had to cut the neck bottom out. But what I ended up doing here on this one was I had this piece of wood underneath here like so and it would drop down like that. I hope you can see that. Let me turn it at an angle. Um, but what that did was it made this part of the neck right here and right here where it goes to the box really thin um, which would give it the opportunity to pull this up a little bit here if you can see that. Now you want to remember that common sense dictates that, that the tension between here and this bridge is really high because if you pluck those strings when your guitar is strung up, um, well, the sound will tell you that they're a lot more tensioned than what's going on up here where you actually play. So I didn't like that much. So now that this is apart, um, something else I had done is I put a small piece of uh, old fingerboard right here to beef this up, which would allegedly beef that up. So what I've done is I've knocked that piece off. I'm going to have to redo the copper tape here. And I've cut another piece of neck like so. I've put holes in it for uh, my pins there that go perpendicular and one here. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to lay this like so and line it up here. I'm going to clamp that for a minute and I'm going to drill my holes down through here. Uh, drill this as it needs to be and finish this so I can prepare this to stick out of the box and get the paint done before I ruin it. So what I'm doing here is I am drilling. I've clamped um, the new board on. I've done the paint on it. And um, there's the hole for the new pegs. Uh, the dowel is going in this way. But what I'm doing is I'm drilling down through the uh, tension pins here. And I'm going to pop this off quick and know that it's lined up. And there's my holes there. I'm going to go ahead and finish those all the way through and then drill them out to the same size as these. Then I can re-copper tape it and put uh, my canning lid covers on it. And this will be ready then finally to glue on. I'm going to have to put a couple shims in here to strengthen this up a little bit. Uh, and and my, I know my coil goes right there. So this will be a lot stronger when I'm done. Okay, so there's my four holes now going all the way through. you got to think ahead on this because if you don't, you end up marring up the paint. But you can see that I've gone all the way through. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the bit that's the same size as the tension pins. And I am going to 
start that hole on each one of these uh, holes here and go down like so and the paint isn't going to be that marred up just a little bit there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a countersink tool because the string keepers won't fit through there so I'm going to countersink this out make it look good and then I'll be ready to finally glue this thing up there now all my pin holes are all the way through I know you like the sound of that drill don't you Yeah, the string keepers will go down in there now. Um, look, the paint's okay. That's amazing. If you don't have one of these countersink tools, you really need one because it lets you do stuff like this really quick. So now I can sand that a tad on the belt sander, make sure everything's okay, and then lay this on top glue it and then drive my tension pins in redo my copper tape and put the covers on after that it'll just be a matter of figuring out my hinges are here I always make my boxes so they open without taking the strings off so the neck will have to be deeper it typically goes down to this line right here with a double neck board I know that from building a ton of these out of the triple Maduro 60 by sixes and um, since the neck board is deeper I'm going to have to carve off this side a little bit and put a bevel on it so it opens and closes easily all right we've got our glue on I don't really want to bunch down those holes yet to clog up my tension pins but Kind of hard to turn the camera off and your hands are full of glue, ain't it, son? There we go. Notice I got my flapper tape on there that lets me know. Sure don't want to go through my fingerboard right. I'm going to take a little bit of my white glue that I used just for um, the dowels. Squirt it down in there. And you can tell I got plenty of glue running out all over the place there. So this will be nice and strong. So just line that up. Put each of these in here. And then I'll be waiting for that to dry. Get a tad bit of this glue off here and get a couple more clamps on here. And we will be good to go. Most of this is hid inside the box. So this part won't really matter, but the main thing is we get it clamped up good and let it dry overnight. I'll bet you you're loving that. Anyway, I just drove down um, those tension pins down into here, um, so we're good to go. A couple more clamps, leave it dry overnight, get rid of that gap there, and see you tomorrow. All right, the usual story of a cigar box guitar builder, all clamped up and nowhere to go. Okay, got the neck glued on, got the clamps on, turned out or off, turned out okay. Everything's good. Um, also been working on the box pockets, got to take them down a little bit. Um, what I have to do right now is I'm taking and putting... There's a quail on the roof. There's a California quail on the roof of the workshop. But you see there's a little gap right there. I've got to make sure uh, that this pickup isn't pushed up too much. So I've cut these spacers here out of the top of a guitar box. It wasn't macho, of course. And then I'm going to glue these on right here. Like so, 
and right there where everything goes and I've got a um, I've got a gap right here where the coil sits so I'm going to glue these on and let them set up and then instead of gluing the top on I want to get away from that but these spacers are as wide as the neck board and that's for a reason when I finally set this on here I'm going to pick two spots like here and here and then I'm going to bolt the neck on we're not going to glue the neck on but first off again it's glue these spacers on to the top of the neck board and then we'll do the layout where the holes go now before I forget to show you I put copper tape where uh, my ball canning lid cover is going to fit on the back of the tailpiece and I brought that forward underneath the box lid and brought it down the sides of the neck where I can just ground my wire coming off the top of the, or the bottom of the potentiometer there. Don't want to forget that. Now I can start bolting it up. Now I'm going to take this box here and I've measured out how much further down this pocket's got to go and take a little square and mark that off. Now I'm going to take this saw here and this handy gadget this thing comes in handy every time I turn around cut this down some and then make sure that this is all uh, flattened out want to remember again the box is going to open up this way and the depth of this neck now is going to make it where I've got to cut a bevel this has got to be a little bit wider and then cut a bevel here just a little bit so the box closes Okay, I've got the neck pockets right what I'm doing now is taking two pieces of tape which will give me a straight edge lining up with the neck here side of the neck here I just basically put that like that and I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna drill my two holes here and here now I don't want to be too close to the bridge um, I also don't want to drill holes too close to the sound holes and start getting some cracks going on here so I am just going to take where I think they should be in this area right in here where I don't want to interfere with the moxie too much maybe I'll put it right like so and then I'll put another one back here towards the back now I want to do the reason I put that tape down there is because now I can take a square and go off to the side I'm going to get off that box corner and I want to make sure that I draw a line right here and then I can come in off the side over here I love this small um, square and I like that about right there like so so that gives me my line now if I come in off of here with line up my ruler along here and here I think I want to come in about 12 make a mark there line up 12 on this side right here like so and do the same back there and I'll drill my two holes here and two holes here and I want them to go all the way through okay I'm always drilling a pilot hole because it's easier to fix a small hole than a big one I'll do the same thing back here and then I'll pull the, the top of the box off. I'm going to countersink these holes uh, and do the same thing back here. Now 
I'll write that bigger holes now all the way through the box and we're going to carefully put countersink so these rustic looking screws will sit down level with the surface of the box so we can pull this tape off and there we go nothing's too tore up so we want to do this very carefully of course I put the bits that I use back in the box with the screws I use now I'm going to very carefully spin this around like so. I don't want to tear up that paper any more than I have to and I will touch it up with a little razor knife and we'll be running these screws in like so yeah, that's countersunk and a little tad piece of paper sticking out right there I we'll run these screws down make sure they're not sticking out pointing that one forward okay I'm putting the hinges back on the top of the box here making sure I don't strip those out I put a tad bit of duco cement on all these so they stay in place it's really important that the top of the box doesn't get loose so sorry to bore you with these details but they matter so now the trick is does the box close no it doesn't see so if I add wood onto the neck chances are I'm gonna to need to take a little bit off so the nice thing about this is I just take this pencil you can see right there make a mark there and there and then I can take a square and a piece of tape cut that off and do the same thing back here of course I'm gonna bevel that edge just a little bit so this closes up once that's done I put my wiring on put my sink drains and thumb screws on and we string her up okay get that final bevel on there there we go and look at that drops right in perfect all right time to clean some stuff up get the bridge on i've got the ground wire to hook back up on to um, the copper tape here I'm gonna run some copper tape here ground that there and uh, hook up my jack wire again and we will be good to go all right hey it is the last day of school of the 1819 school year Tammy's here with me hey Tam uh, got my Bob Log the third school bus shirt on that makes it official uh, hey the guitar is done all wired back up and um, it's starting to sound like something so um, it's really an experience to take a look at your work from like years past when you first start off and you finally see the progression you've made and why um, if I can give you a, a tip about something that's going to take your guitars to the next level that is the action uh, the string height and uh, and of course the intonation all goes with that so um, that said I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out and I think it sounds pretty good too Subscribe below, hit the notify button, give me a like, and I will see you next time.